Welcome to the Babecast. I'm Dr. Taylor Burroughs, and I'm really excited. This is my first video podcast for YouTube, and I have a very special guest. I don't have very many women on my show, so today I have Ash Parasau. And before we get started and I introduce her properly, I just wanted to remind you guys for, from the, all the amazing sponsors that I have for the show. Uh, so we have Nick Lowry from Ground Shark Coffee, and uh, I'm going to put in the episode notes links to all of these great sponsors. Uh, but he's, his coffee's really taken off, and his uh, tagline is, wake up like you mean it, and you know you want to do that. So definitely take a look at his website. And Bill Maser, he's the founder of the Men of Character Conference, which really had a lot of um, success in developing some young minds towards healthy masculinity and creating some mentorships with uh, aspiring young gentlemen. And of course, we have Johnny Noble, as we affectionately know him from uh, Noble Body Cosmetics. And I actually use his products, so his face oil. He's got a male one and a female one, and also a body scrub. And it's just really remarkable. I love using it every night. I've been using it since August, and I've gotten so many compliments. You can see the improvements on my skin. Uh, he knows all the scientific stuff if you want to reach out to him, and he can tell you all about the products technically. But I can just tell you aesthetically, I love the smell. I enjoy putting it on. It's not like uncomfortably oily. It's just perfect. So it's almost like just bathing in some kind of essential oils, right? Um, so definitely check that out too. I would highly recommend. And our last sponsor for the show is Victor Valentine. So he's been a really great um, asset to me, a friend, and I reach out to him when I need some advice on my website or whatever. I haven't really done a lot yet, so don't judge him by my website. But reach out to him for sure if you want like a hands-on consultation on your website. It's victorvalentine.com. And if you mention Babe 10, you get a 10% discount. So absolutely reach out to Victor. So with all that being said, let me properly introduce Miss Ash Pariso. Pariso, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Awesome. Uh, I get a pat on the back for pronouncing it correctly. But I just wanted to let you know, if you're not familiar with Ash, she is on Twitter. That's where I met her. And she can tell you her handle. And I'll put it in the episode notes as well. But really exciting. She's a performance artist. And she can go into the details that, about that as well. But from what she's told me, it's an LED performance um, and uh, lots of other stuff. And she's also a writer, which is what I really um, am interested about um, and how we connected was about her writing from her blog, damesatknow.com, uh, a lot of women's issues. And so that's something that I'd love to get into deeply today because we have a good amount of time to get into it. So Ash, you want to tell everybody a little bit about yourself that I didn't cover already? Yeah. Um, so I live on the East Coast. I moved here about two years ago from the Midwest. I work with a performance artist group and we do, we put on fire and LED shows along the coast. We mostly entertain the tourists through the summer months and then we do other events through the rest of the year. So I do LED and like fire shows. Um, I started doing it as a hobby several years ago. I did hoop dance, which a lot of people don't know what that is. Some people do, um, but you can, you can Google it if you don't know uh, <laughs> what it is. But basically like a hula hoop, uh, you know, that people, you know, your grandparents did as, you know, a kid. Um, it's kind of like a more elaborate dance style, like kind of street performing a little bit. Um, and I just kind of took that to the next level and started lighting a hula hoop on fire. Whoa. And when I came down here to the Myrtle Beach area, I found a group that does that as a performance profession. So I got hooked up with them and we kind of just have fun. We entertain the tourists and it is a great time. I love doing it. So other than that, I'm also a writer. I have a blog called damesthatknow.com and it's a blog mostly targeted towards women and it's about dating and relationship strategy. I aim to help women gain happiness and respecting their relationships, uh, mostly through discussion and actionable advice. That's awesome. And absolutely, it's so important. We need more resources for women. And, you know, 
I don't know if this is going on a tangent, but maybe you know some of these people. So I'd like to, to as a writer, um, hear what you have to say if you're, if you're familiar with them. I remember I first got on to this type of, I don't know what even to call it, but um, blogging, I guess, from Elephant Journal. I'm sure you're uh -huh. familiar with Elephant Journal, right? I know yeah. you've written for Thought Catalog, which I think I'm familiar with. I saw some of your articles, but what brought me to this sort of empowerment, like evolution, it's like different layers of female ev uh, empowerment, right? From the leaving the feminism to, there's this woman named Kate Rose. Are you familiar with her? I'm sorry? Kate Rose, do you know her? No, I'm not familiar with her. She's someone that I connected with on Facebook uh, directly, but she's a, a writer for Elephant Journal. And her articles are very spiritual, kind of like yoga, esoteric style. And that was something that I really dug into, like I dug my claws into, and it really helped me through some tumultuous periods of soul searching. But once I got to Twitter and I really got to some of this red pill content, that's when things got even more interesting, right? Because it's a, yeah. a, a total contrast to that element and the feminism, but it, it seemed to be the missing piece for me, although it wasn't perfect. And, and, I, and I know in the red pill that was, there was a lack of this female voice because it was more contrasting it and almost rejecting the feminine voice um, in favor of sort of their version of what a female should be like. And yeah. when, I, when I connected with you, I thought it was really cool that you were trying to or doing this this uh, creating this female voice of your own on your website from this informed perspective but still very strong and feminine yeah i definitely relate to everything you just said so i follow the red pill sort of manosphere uh part of the internet and it's it's interesting because although I don't always agree with everything that they say, I think that it's very interesting and admirable that they have such a tight knit group of men that kind of just help each other and they blog, they write, they have podcasts, they do all these things. And I really would love to have that for women. And, you know, I don't call myself a red pill woman. I just think that women need to get together and be able to do the same kind of similar actionable talking to each other, connecting, giving each other advice that's good and not just focus on such a victim mentality. I know that a lot of feminism has the victim mentality and I would really love to just kind of get away from that and focus on really connecting, helping each other, making friends and helping each other become happier in their relationships with men. Yeah, and maybe this is a good time just to ask you personally um, where you're at in your life. And, and I, I don't know, we've never spoken before like this. So um, you may or may not know that I'm divorced and mm -hmm. I've, I've been single since I left my husband. Well, no, I did have, <laughs> I did have a six month relationship with a, a, a someone older than me who had two teenage boys that I thought was going to go somewhere, but it ended last December. Um, so I've been single for the majority of the time, but, uh, for the last three years, but aside from that, and I'm, I've been single since last December. What about you? Well, I am in, I've been with the same man for 11 years. And before that I've dated a few different guys. Um, I've mostly had experience with longer term relationships. I have dated a little bit in my early twenties. Um, but I definitely have more experience in longer term relationships. So a lot of my writing and a lot of my advice is based on the things that I've experienced, the things that I've learned and what I've observed through, you know, having friends, you know, and helping them. And so that's kind of where I'm at. I'm in a very uh, serious long term relationship and I've, I just kind of would like to share what I've learned and I'm in believe me, I don't always have all the answers, but I would just like to be able to kind of help women with what I've personally learned myself. Absolutely. And do you, 
I, I glanced um, one of your articles, and maybe we can jump off here too, um, about not being a wife to a, a boyfriend or something. What was the title? Can you clarify that? Uh, yeah, um, I don't remember the exact title, but it, it was something about, you know, not being a wife to a boyfriend. Yeah. So okay. basically what, what I meant by that was you kind of, a lot of women get into a pattern where they they go for the kind of wifely role very quickly and they don't give men the incentive to marry them and i think that that's kind of a problem what we're dealing with in our culture today um but it's kind of like you can you can show men what you're about but make sure that they they kind men like to work for what men like to work for a serious relationship. They want to know that you're, they want to know that you're worth it. They want to know that there's something in it for them as well. Absolutely. Like having a value that you bring to the table, but I also hear you kind of saying that they want to, they want to earn you in a way, you know, and not like to objectify a woman, but in a sense, the relationship has to has to dangle a little bit maybe is what you're saying yes yes so how 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 do you do that um i guess if you're you know i think it's healthy to be in a long-term relationship without being married but how do you keep that that gap so that you're always feeling like he's he's still working for it that's a good question <laughs> well it's just it comes down to always having a sense of self-worth and knowing that at any time you can take him or leave him. And that what, what I mean by that is, you know, and it's not meant to disrespect him in any way. It's that you know that you are happy with him, but you can also be happy without him. And I think that it's good to display that in your actions and he has to know that as well because if he knows that he's also going to value your time and value your efforts in your relationship and that's and that's, what, mm -hmm. that's what's going to keep him on his toes in the relationship as well definitely i think it's so important to have that independence. I mean, you have to have that component of independence. Um, it doesn't mean, you know, the strong independent woman type, but just having an identity outside of just your relationship so that you can create that healthy breathing room between the two of you. Uh, and it sounds very similar to the frame that, that, the, that the men talk about, right? So it's almost like both people have to have their own frame or independent but within the relationship how do you feel about traditionally the man having more of the the dominant authority and the woman being more of the submissive i don't really like the word submissive but i think you, was it you that was writing about it being voluntary and that i mean a, a few women have have spoken about it but i do think it's important for a woman to defer to her man's leadership but i feel that the dominant submissive gives the wrong impression sometimes when people talk about it yeah um i think that it's it's whatever however you naturally come into relationship a lot of people like to have the dominant uh, more submissive type of relationship it's not necessarily naturally where i personally fall i think that uh me and my man have we have our own certain set of strength and strengths and weaknesses and we kind of play on that like when i'm at my weaker points he kind of steps up and is the stronger uh, one in the relationship and vice versa. So I wouldn't really say that he's the dominant one in the relationship, but I also wouldn't say that I am either. It's kind of like, it kind of ebbs and flows according to what the situation is and what we're dealing with. Yeah. And that's, that's how I see it. That dominant, the dominant persona or the submissive persona can be more fluid when you describe it that way. But the leadership to me is different. So if you, if you, assess who is leading the relationship and who is the co-captain sort of thing, right? Like if you had to dis determine 
um, a, if you were going to relocate, you know, whose career would be more important? That's interesting. Um, that would be something that we would have to talk about and kind of work through if we had, you know, reached that point. Um, so far, it hasn't really been an issue for us. But, you know, I'm not here to tell anybody that, that you know, they can't have their relationship in their own way. If other people want to have, you know, the dominant submissive relationship, I'm perfectly fine with that. I say do whatever works for you, whatever makes you happy. And I'm not here to trash anybody's life. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I think getting back to the, the article, um, when it was not treating a boyfriend like, like a husband and sort of keeping him working for it so that he doesn't uh, what is it? By the cow? I I never remember these sayings. Oh, by the milk, or <laughs> you why buy the cow if you've got the milk or something? Yeah, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? Right? Okay, thank you. So that idea, oh gosh, I hate that saying so much, but um, <laughs> I I see it as more of a sexual thing, right? Like if you're giving sex without having the structure of a relationship, then what is the point of, of the guy then committing to you because you're just giving it away in a casual way. But I feel like once you're in a relationship and the, and the example that you talked about in that article, was a woman who ha was in a relationship for four years. Um, and so I, I feel like a four year relationship is pretty serious as long as they're monogamous and they're committed and there's no deceit going on or anything like that, that it's, it, it isn't a marriage, granted, it's still different. There's a lot of things that people don't realize that change and evolve once you are married. And if you're gonna have kids and you wanna have a, a, a marriage um, in order to frame that family in it, um, then you definitely want to work towards that. Okay, well, you might get stuck, I guess, but for the most part, I don't know, I don't know how you wouldn't act like a spouse at least in, in effect. Do you know what I mean? If you're with yeah. someone for four years, that would be very hard to still stay kind of like detached. Yeah, I agree. Especially if they live together, I think you kind of naturally fall into uh, a more married couple dynamic. Yeah. And I think that, the, you know, and if that happens, that's okay. It's just the, the point of that article was meant to say, don't give all of yourself unless you're also getting something. Like, if there's an, in, there has to be an incentive for commitment. And if women are kind of just jumping into a relationship and giving their all and basically being the wife, well, what's, what is she getting in return? Well, I mean, I, it does kind of sound transactional to me, so I'm a little bit hesitant to run with yeah. that completely. But I, I, I think that a woman should, as long as she's got the commitment and she's got um, the respect, like if he's being very respectful to her, if he's bringing um, the, the, obviously there, he might be paying for some activities that they're doing together. If they're living together, he's paying for some of the bills or, or whatnot, whatever the arrangement is. Um, he may be sweet and romantic and sending flowers and, you know, treating you like a lady, right? That would be the value is to be treated like a lady and to be respected and to feel protected and have all the affection and, and all of that stuff that goes with it. So to me, that's valuable in and of itself. And I don't know that I would want to hold back giving love in return. I almost feel like that would have the opposite effect. In, I mean, it's dependent on the person, but to me, the more loving, kind, and supportive you are in, in, as a whole person in the marriage, in, in the marriage, sorry, but in the, in the relationship, that he would not want to lose that, that he would value that. And as long as he's giving you all those other things that I mentioned in return. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. I, I completely understand your point there. I think as long as you're happy, as long as you're getting what you need in the relationship, then you know, you know through your gut feeling what's right for you. And yeah. if it works for you, then it works for you. 
hopefully people are becoming more self-actualized and mature before they getting into relationships. I know there is some personal growth and development that happens once you're in a relationship, but I think it's better to have some basic foundations established before you jump into a relationship. Like if you talk to 18 and 19 and 20 year olds uh, who are settling down, I think that's really young. Even if we want to encourage women to get into relationships a little bit earlier than they are now, I don't, I don't really think it's good to jump into it too young. And I was talking about this the other day. I don't know if you caught caught wind of any any of that that I was mentioning don't date children don't date people who are in late adolescence because their brains aren't developed yet <laughs> yeah I did catch some of that and I, I definitely agree uh, it was a tweet that I had caught from you about uh, women in their clo- the closer to 30 rather than you know women closer to 20 um, yeah and I agree it's uh, you got to be careful in relationships when you're really young because you don't you don't really know yourself completely. You don't know where you, you don't always know where your boundaries are. And I know that that was true for me when I was, when, when I was 20, um, I mean, I had to learn so much between then and now. Um, but yeah, jumping into relationships very young is, is something you got to be careful about. Um, because you just, you don't always, know how to navigate those relationships in a mature way and it it just takes time and experience and they can become very codependent you know that i see i've seen so many couples that got together in high school and they've been together for 20 years and then they divorce or they're you know i've seen them before they divorce but they're pending divorce and it's so sad but it's gotten so toxic almost in the relationship, right? So um, yeah, it it can be very, very unfortunate how it ends up that way. So I would like to see people wait until they mature a little bit, they know themselves a little bit better, and and then develop these values and, and standards and lifestyle factors that they can kind of base a relationship on because they've sort of identified a partner that is complementary to that and and aligned with all of those things. Oh yeah. Yeah. I definitely agree with you there. <laughs> um, one thing I wanted to ask you because I, you wrote this in the, in the form in the application and it was an interesting, an interesting intention that I wanted to draw out. So what do modern women have to offer? It, it's very interesting that you, uh, that you mentioned that because I, I just posted a, an article today on my blog um, and the title is, Yes, You Do Have Something to Offer. Uh, so in that article, in the post that I just uh, published today, I talk about an article that I wrote on Thought Catalog a few years ago. And it was kind of meant for inspiring women to think about what they're giving in a relationship rather than only what they're getting. Um, and I don't, I, I just wanted women to start to think about that and have a conversation. And it was interesting because the response that I got from that article was, I, I thought that I would get a lot of criticism from women from it. I thought that they would be angry and I thought that I would get a lot of feminist a response that would not be positive. Uh, but it kind of got more attention from the, uh, the MGTOW, the men going their own way, mm-hmm. uh, about how women have nothing to offer besides sex. And a lot of, um, I mean, there were so many comments that I've got from, from those kind of guys about that. But I think it's important that women not, that women kind of ignore those type of messages. Because I think that each woman has something that they can give, whether it's their love, support, their companionship, their partnership, their, if they, if they can help their 
significant other through times of heartache and trauma. There are a lot of things that a woman can give. And I mentioned more of those things in the article that I just posted. But there are a lot of things that women can give and it's just up to them to decide what that is. Absolutely. And it's important, I, I think, for us to recognize um, what we do have that is valuable to the type of man that will make us happy, which is the strong masculine presence in our lives. So right now, I think people are thinking the value is all the masculine things that they're trying to embody and then taking that role away from men. So being able to, to correct this really unhealthy, distorted system that's been perpetuated for so long and and really look i think towards a more healthy positive um for lack of a better term sexual marketplace uh it, as we head into the future you know if we can focus on ourselves and get into a healthier frame of mind ourselves as as women and have like you you're talking about uh, women needing a stronger sexual strategy so that they can create their boundaries and create healthy relationships but not just the relationships but the dating process right so having a, a sexual strategy through the the sexual marketplace so that they can then find a healthy person to partner with is so important and we don't have a lot of that i think a lot of the we see either the matchmakers that are trying to like put like these, I don't know, cliche matches together, or we see women who are very feminist that want to be very casual with the dating scene and want to be, you know, more like a PUA woman. But what about something in the middle where you can have uh, like, you know, a, a long-term relationship in mind, but, you know, you need to kind of learn how to, how to date through the modern world at the same time. So it's, it's sort of blending both elements without losing sight of our values or whatever those are. But for me, it's looking for something long-term and monogamous. Yeah, I think it's important for women to, to get out and date and have fun and not take things so seriously all the time. Uh, but at the same time, you gotta develop yourself. You gotta know yourself. And then in, in doing that, you can sort of get a feel for the things that you naturally possess that is going to be valuable to a man. And it's kind of just about uh, going back to the strategy and understanding what you have to offer, what you naturally enjoy doing for a partner, and then finding a man who values those things. Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping that we are moving in the right direction with, you know, women like you and, and, and me that are really trying to, you know, be vocal and visible about it and, and try to encourage other women as well. And we don't always have to agree or have the same approach because we all want different things ultimately. And that's okay. But just to be able to really want to be healthy and to be happy and have a successful outcome at the end of it. But yeah, it's important to, to enjoy life and life is more than just the relationship that you end up in, right? Like there's a lot more right. to, to being a human being and being able to establish that, uh, that happiness, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, everybody, we are multifaceted people and we have, different things going on in our lives other than men and women. And I think that that's great. I think that we need to really embrace that. And I understand that, um, you know, not everybody, you're not going to be everybody's cup of tea and that's just fine. Uh, but it's really comes down to finding somebody that is complimentary to you and right for you. And there are a lot of, um, a lot of women on dating sites and they have a lot of trouble finding the right kind of men. It, but it is important for women, I think, to get in sort of a, a group where they can connect with other women. That's why I'm, you know, doing this kind of thing. That's why I write. That's why I, you know, coming on your show because when you look for advice for women on relationships and dating, a lot of the advice you're going to see are from men. It's, it's very interesting, especially on YouTube. You, you know, you type in 
you know, relationship <laughs> advice for women. And you're going to get a lot of, you're going to get a lot of responses and results from men. And those are fine. I think that men have a lot of good advice to offer women as well. But I think that more women need to jump in, in the conversation. And I just think that we could really connect the way that men do. And that's kind of why I do this. That's the purpose that I have in my writing and the advice I give. And I really hope that we are, like you said, I really hope that we are moving in the right direction. I think we are. I think we are too. Now, Ash, I know this is the first time I've done this. So I'm, I'm getting a notification that this might end in like a minute and a half. So if it does end, can you just uh, speak to what's one thing that a woman can put into action that's important for her to be happy and healthy and, and, and what, if that means a relationship or not? Well, I would say that the most important thing is develop your self-worth and develop strong, healthy boundaries. And if you can do that, then I think that you're headed in a good direction at finding happiness in a relationship. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I want to just end here and make sure that we uh, leave the audience with a, a full episode of you. And hopefully they will go to your website and check you out at damesthatknow.com. And I really appreciate you being on the Babe.